Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, today I'm taking you back to 1546 in the reign of King Henry VIII for On This Day in Tudor History, the 26th of January 1546, judge of assize and law reporter Sir John Spellman died. He was about 66 at his death, and he was still working as a judge of the Assize at his death, although he'd stopped going on the circuit in 1540 due to his age and health, and was sitting at Westminster Hall instead. He was buried at Narborough in Norfolk, and his memorial brass depicts Spellman and his wife Elizabeth kneeling at prayer desks. Spellman is depicted in his judicial robes, and there is also a picture of the resurrection, indicative of the couple's hope of their own resurrection. I'm going to share with you a few facts about this Tudor judge. John Spellman was a Norfolk man and was born in around 1480 as the fourth son of Henry Spellman, a reader of Gray's Inn and recorder of Norwich, and his second wife, Ella. John Spellman was inducted into Gray's Inn in 1500, becoming a bencher in 1514. In 1521, Spellman became a sergeant, and in 1522, he was elected as recorder of Norwich. In 1526, he became one of King Henry VIII's sergeants and became justice of the King's Bench in July 1531, being sworn in by Sir Thomas More. He was knighted in 1532. He went on the Northern Circuit as a judge of the Assize until 1537, when he changed to the Home Circuit. After inheriting the estate at Narborough in Norfolk from his half-brother, he built Narborough Hall, and his descendants resided there until the late 18th century. Spellman is recorded as having 20 children with his wife Elizabeth, 13 sons and seven daughters, including Erasmus, his seventh son, to whom he left his law books. Sir John Spellman is mostly known today for his reports of legal cases from 1502 to 1540, which included the proceedings against Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, Bishop John Fisher, Sir Thomas More and Queen Anne Boleyn. J. H. Baker, the editor of his reports, notes that Spellman's compilation of reports are the largest made in Henry VIII's reign and the only reports from his reign to have been written by a judge. And I want to share with you a couple of reports because I've got his reports, the book of his reports here, that I found interesting. One is a report on an attempted suicide, and the other is Spellman's report on the legal proceedings against Queen Anne Boleyn and the men in May 1536. So I'm going to find those for you now. It's just, it's weird what I find interesting perhaps, but so I'm going to read it to you anyway. Okay, this is from an assembly of judges in 1533. If the man cuts his own throat with intent to kill himself and then lives two or three days, becomes repentant and confesses his misdeed to his confessor and then dies a good Christian, should he still forfeit his goods? Fitz James and Coningsby justices thought not, but all the other justices were of contrary opinion. Now, I don't know why, but that one just stood out to me and I thought that was an interesting one. So that's one of his reports. And then we have the attainder of the said Queen Anne from, of course, 1536. Then afterwards, in the 28th year of Henry VIII, the said Queen, the Lord Rochford, her brother, Norris of the King's Privy Chamber and in highest favour with the King, Weston, another of the King's Privy Chamber, William Brereton, another of the King's Privy Chamber, and Mark Smeaton, groom of the King's Chamber, were indicted that they had violated and had carnal knowledge of the said Queen, each by himself at separate times. 
Norris, Brereton and Smeaton were arraigned before the commissioners in Westminster Hall on the Friday to wit, the 12th day of May, in the aforesaid 1536. And there, Mark Smeaton confessed that he had had carnal knowledge of the Queen three times. Norris, Brereton and Weston pleaded not guilty, but were found guilty and had judgment to be drawn, hanged and beheaded and quartered. And the Monday next following, 15th May, at the Tower of London before Thomas, Duke of Norfolk, steward of England for the time being, the said Queen and her brother, the Lord Rochford, were arraigned for the said treasons because the said Lord was a Lord of Parliament. And they were tried by their peers and were found guilty and the said steward gave judgment. The judgment against the Queen was that she should be burned for that is the judgment of treason against a woman. But because she was queen, the steward gave judgment that she should be burned or beheaded at the king's pleasure. And the judgment against the Lord Rochford was that he should be drawn, hanged and quartered. Note that the justices murmured at this judgment against the queen, for such judgment in the disjunctive had not been seen. Also, the said queen and lord and the other four were indicted twice, once in the county of Kent and again in the county of Middlesex for one same treason, but it was supposed at different times and places. And the points against the Queen were that she procured the said Lord, her brother, and the other four to defile her and to have carnal knowledge of her, and that they did so, and that they conspired the King's death. For she said that the King should never have her heart and she said to each of the four by himself that she loved him more than the others. And this slandered the issue which was begotten between her and the king, which is made treason by the statute of the 26th year of the present king. And all the evidence was of bawdry and lechery, so that there was no such whore in the realm. Note that this matter was disclosed by a woman called the Lady Wingfield, who had been a servant to the said queen and of the same qualities. And suddenly the said Wingfield became sick and a short time before her death showed this matter to one of her, etc. And that is a wonderful um, report, a wonderful source for the case against Anne Boleyn. And actually that bit, this is a report from um, a legal man, a judge, um, and he makes no mention there of any evidence being given by Lady Rochford, Jane Boleyn, uh, wife of George Boleyn and a lady of the Queen. And that is a key bit for those of us that think that uh, poor Jane Boleyn has been maligned. Um, it, she's gone down in history as bringing the Boleyns down because of her jealousy and that. I'm sorry, but there's no mention of Jane Boleyn doing anything, being present at court or providing evidence against them. Just the uh, possibility posthumous uh, correspondence of Bridget Wingfield, Lady Wingfield, who was a friend of Anne Boleyn. And we don't know precisely what she said, but something she wrote was used against Anne. So one of my favourite sources, I have quite a few favourites, uh, contemporary sources, the reports of Justice John Spellman, who died on this day in Tudor history. Do check out the description uh, for a link to my other On This Day in Tudor History from last year. Uh, you get two for one at the moment. Um, and thank you for joining me. You can subscribe by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be uh, notified as these videos go live. And you can give me a like and leave a comment as well. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.